Hello everyone. I hope everyone has got admitted into the Zoom room. Welcome to today's webinar on soft skills. Is everyone able to hear me? Um, if y'all are able to hear, not hear me, please type in the chat box and we will see what we can do about it. I can see about uh, 19 people have logged in and please type your response in the chat box if you're not able to hear us. My name is Meera Singh Rawat. I'm accompanied today by two of my colleagues as my support partners, Summer from India and Jackie from US. They'll be doing their magic at the back end with managing the tech and moderating the chat for us. While we can see your names, but it'll be great if all of you can write on chat your location and if possible, the nano degree that you are pursuing so that everyone gets to know each other and connect later if they want to. So welcome once again and let's begin. Summer, if you see anybody not able to hear us, uh, just point it out to me, please. Thank you. So we begin with our presentation. It's on soft skills, an important aspect of career development, as you all can see. So we'll move on to the slide two, which is about me. I'm currently located out of India, and I have over 20 years of experience in senior leadership roles for multinational large firms and their captives with focus on banking and finance services. I'm culturally astute with extensive experience in bringing together global stakeholders. I'm known for mentoring, coaching, developing high performance teams with diverse capabilities. I have consistently nurtured teams and developed leaders across my tenure. I'm a guest speaker at India's premier business schools on persuasive communication. And to share one of the fun facts about me, I love traveling, meeting and engaging with people from different cultures, understanding their interest and bringing back best experiences. So that's about me. Uh, let's move on to the next slide, which is about what are the key takeaways for today? What's there in it for me? The normal question, which everyone would like to ask. So there are five key takeaways. We'll all try and understand what soft skills are. What is the importance of soft skills in career development? Which soft skills can enhance employability? Most important, how, we, how do we demonstrate? Since it's called soft, we'll understand how to demonstrate them because they are not like a technical degree that you can just put on your resume or show it to somebody. So how do we demonstrate? And last but not the least, how do we develop the soft skills? So these are the five key takeaways that we are going to get from this webinar. Moving on to the agenda slide. The agenda slide has five items and all of them are aligned to the key takeaways. Moving to the next slide. Why? What are soft skills? So I hope we all are all on, this, on, the, on that slide. And yes, Summer, we can. So what comes to your mind when you think of soft skills? What comes to your mind? Just think about it. And if you can think of some words, you feel free to put it on the chat box. It'll be good to see. Whenever we hear soft skills, I'm sure this is not a new term. Everybody has heard it before. So it'll be lovely to know. Oh, I can see quite a few of my students who have taken coaching sessions. Vijay is new, Lamai is new, Rasha. All right. Okay. She says interacting with people, Alina, mm -hmm. communication skills, bingo. That's a big topic. And I'll come to it in one of my slides. Lovely. Uh, so yeah, I think, uh, welcome Jean. I can see you, you're doing your DevOps. I can see Z doing networking. All right, so what comes to your mind when you think of soft skills? Now, we can click and you will see the first four examples of soft skills appearing on the screen. I have listed about 16 of them and I'll keep them on the slide for you to have a look at them while I talk to you about what I think about soft skills. While you can refer the examples of soft skills that are listed on the slide, let me expand and share my views to get a better understanding on what are soft skills. If you have been researching ways to get ahead in your job hunt, you may have come across the term soft skills. Even though the term is used frequently, we may not have fully understood exactly what it means. They're not as easy to quantify or evaluate, but they are just as valuable. We are not able to learn them at school or take a course in how to gain them. They can typically come naturally to you as a person. If you're trying to enhance your resume or position yourself perfectly during your next interview, you should know how to showcase your soft skills. But before you can do that, let us familiarize with what exactly soft skills are. So on the next slide, we see that soft skills have been summarized. 
So soft skills are attributes and behaviors that are a natural part of your character, like the ability to listen, show empathy, think outside the box, or solve problems. These skills define us and our habits. They are concerned with our emotional intelligence and how we perceive the world. Soft skills are defined by how you approach life and work, the way you interact with people. Soft skills is an umbrella term that encompasses everything from social skills to communication skills to emotional intelligence and to personal character traits. So that's soft skills for you. I always love to give this example of ceiling versus flow. So hard skills or tech skills set the floor for a position, whereas soft skills often set the ceiling for how far you can advance. So think about it. You're either qualified to do the day-to-day -day job or you are not. If the position requires proficiency in Python, you can't really fake it. Either you can demonstrate the proper qualifications or you can't. You might get hired at a firm as an accountant, which presumably requires the appropriate hard skill degree in accountancy. But if you want to be the CEO or CFO someday, you better combine the basic talent with additional soft skills like communication, leadership, organization. Otherwise, 40 years from now, you might retire as an entry level accountant. So that is what are soft skills for us. We move on to slide number nine, which is why do soft skills matter? I hope I'm audible to everyone. Yeah, we move to the next slide, Summer. Hard skills can land you to an interview, but you need soft skills to get through them. So we move to the next slide. And what do we see there? We see statistics. We see statistics of various organizations which I plan to share with you. This slide has statistics from Wall Street Journal where we can see what executives have to say about importance of soft skills and how difficult it is to find talent with appropriate soft skills. You can read the numbers yourself, it's up there for you. Employers these days are rightfully placing more focus on one's soft skills when considering if he or she has the minimum qualifications for a job. And here are some of the statistics to tell the story. Moving on to the next slide, we also see what World Economic Forum and LinkedIn and Harvard Business and Financial Times have to say about soft skills. So while you all read that, let me give you a bit of my view on why do soft skills matter. So why are soft skills seen so important? For many employers, the technical hard skills that are required for performing a job, like writing a code or completing the monthly checkout, are just the baseline. Any employee who wants to fill that role to be proficient at certain hard, has to be proficient at certain hard skills. That's the price of entry. But it's the soft skills that set a rock star employee apart from their coworkers. An experienced analyst who gets along with his or her co-workers, who's always on time and takes pride in his or her work, is more valuable than the one who is antagonistic and does, not, and does just enough to get by, even if he or she is equally proficient in terms of technical skills. So, soft skills can even make up for less than stellar hard skills in some cases. How much does it really matter if the analyst with the great attitude is a bit slower in completing his delivery than the grumpy analyst or coder? Think about it. This is just a hypothetical example. There are many more roles that an employee plays when he actually lands into the real corporate world. Fair enough, we move on to the next slide, which is slide number 12. I have spoken quite a bit. Now that we have understood what are soft skills and why do they matter? It will be good to do a quick temperature check to do a poll. All ready for it? Let's take a quick poll and see what we feel about ourselves on whether we have the necessary soft skills required to ace an interview. This poll is anonymous, so please feel free to respond. You have three options as listed on the slide. We will give it a minute or two for everyone to type out their response in the chat box and the responses will come without the names and Summer will bring up the results for us on what we have. So here we go.
just answer the first question the second poll will come later on although i have put both the poll questions up there please do not answer the second poll question now fantastic i think um, i can see the numbers increasing awesome we can see almost 40% of the students 64% of the students feeling that they are 50-50 which is a great place to be we have 62% it's good to change our mind it's good time to know where we are there are a couple of more slides ahead and we'll do the second poll at that time so i think we have done uh, summer and i think all of you are able to see the results so we have about 8% which is one of the participants who is excellent at soft skills and i'm very happy to have you here we have 62% who feel they know 50% and they are yet there to reach for the next 50 and the last one who need help is about 38% that's why we are here and we'll continue to have more workshops on soft skills after this one as well thank you some of for putting this up and we can take this off now uh peena just a small thing uh, so i can see their total number of students are 22 uh, so only out of those 22 13 have participated for this poll oh. i would really encourage other students to go ahead and participate yeah can you put it up on the screen again yeah it'll be uh, good sorry i i just crossed it out if you can put it back again for me please so it's already there students should be able to access it uh they oh. would get an option of uh, opening it and they can do oh it. yeah i can see it yes so whoever has not responded please rest assured this is anonymous you can see the results yourself we don't know the names of the students who have answered and we don't know the names of the students who have not answered so that's the beauty if you'll add we will get some statistics it will help us to build our workshops based on this better so we have one more student who has answered i think we have at least six more students who can add even if i leave out my two co partners and two co hosts out of it there are six more students if you all can please answer the poll it will be good the poll is there over there and um, i think some of them have already answered the second poll also okay so we are where we are 15 of them have answered fantastic we have 67% score on 50 50 and we have 40% score on need help if five more students can respond that will be great take your time please don't respond to the second student second poll right now we will come to that later okay we will continue with our presentation and our webinar while students can take their time to answer the poll so back great i think this poll gave us some insights about i'm happy to see some of the students um, are at 50 50 and some of them are at need help it's just the beginning of your career so obviously you know there is so much more to learn we move on to slide number 14 and 15 now what do we see here here's what top organizations have to say the next two slides show research reports by five organizations on the top desired soft skills that employers are looking for in their employees so why what soft skills employers value is the million dollar question as you can see on this slide there is data by i hire they had analyzed 35 million job postings after which they came up with this list of top desired soft skills which the employers are looking for so it will be interesting for you guys to know that hiring experts and business leaders they weigh in on the personality traits that make the difference between a strong candidate and a baseline candidate there are seven types of personality traits that employers are looking for in their engagement during interviews with candidates and you know which are these seven personality traits are you a multitasker are you a strategist are you a decider are you a cautious person are you an independent thinker are you a team player and are you a cultural fit these are some words some personality trait names which can provoke provoke your thought process all right and all the examples of soft skills which you see are an outcome of these seven personality traits and they have been given names which are easy to understand 
so these are good to have personality traits and if you're able to display and demonstrate them this will help differentiate to be in the pool of strong candidate for shortlisting or selections so we see the next slide which also shows the statistics of uh, this is an interesting slide on comparison of seven top career related organization on most valued skills you can see that top five skills have been color coded for easy reference across the board for all the seven organizations communication is in blue problem solving is in peach color flexibility is in gray color work ethic is in purple and teamwork is in green if you look at it little more closely you will find communication cutting across all the seven organizations so it appears on all the seven research reports problem solving flexibility work ethic and teamwork they appear on five out of seven this gives valuable insight on which top soft skills are really a must have to be successful in our career so i have just for good record purpose on the next slide just summarized these five slide these five uh, most valued soft skills summer can we go to the next slide yeah so i've just summarized this for recapping purpose if you can see out of all the 10 or 10 soft skills that seven organizations had collated after talking to hundreds of employers the five top the list communication problem solving flexibility work ethic and teamwork i may even be doing a next workshop whenever i do my next workshop or webinar on deep diving into these five most valued soft skills so look out for that then we move on slide number 18 we summarized it now slide slide number 19 time to do a poll here is where we wanted to put up the second question but i see quite a few students have already answered it wow we have 17 so my question was would you prefer to be in a team led by a leader with exceptional people skills but with not enough tech or hard skills or the other way round and i see 88% of the students or participants voting for a trust me having been there for 25 years in the corporate industry it really really helps to have a leader who has some good soft skills because he has whole team whole battalion of people who can complement him on the tech skills but nobody can complement him on the soft skills or the people skill or the interpersonal skills trust me you wouldn't want a grumpy line manager who does not have acknowledgement who does not have realization and value or who does not know how to express his gratitude or his thanks to you when you really deserve it the most so i'm with uh, the 89% of the audience because if i had to answer this poll i would clearly go with a not because i have worked for two and a half decades in corporate industry i think uh, long ago in my life i realized um, it's the people who take you along the skills the tech skills can always be learned if you have good leaders who are willing to take you along they will guide you they will mentor you they will tell you what you are not good at and they will help you to upskill but if you don't have a great leader with you who doesn't have a foresight who doesn't want to take people up then you are left to yourself in fact i had a coaching student with me and he had an issue where he said that i have all the freedom in my work they allow me to do whatever i want and he works with one of the top banking companies i don't want to name it and he said my issue is i want to change my job i said you are in a dream job most of the students want would want to be in your place he said no i do not have a line manager who pushes me ahead who mentors me or who can challenge my uh, innovation i need somebody who can push me to do more and i don't have that and that is missing i don't mind going to an organization which is not among the top 5 organizations in the world but i want a line manager who can mentor me and who can help me to innovate better so yeah i would have gone with answer a thank you for responding and we can take off the poll results now so we move on to the presentation and we move on to the next slide so how do you put your soft skills on display very important question now we know what are soft skills we know why do they matter 
we know which soft skills the employers want in us. So the next obvious question is, how do we display it? I can't go around telling people I'm very warm by nature. I can, cannot go around telling an interviewer I'm a team player. So how do I display it then, correct? All right, so we move to the next slide. Soft skills are not, so you can read what is written over here, but I'll be sharing my views along with it. The question, soft skills can be the deciding factor between you and another candidate getting the job. No hiring manager is ever going to directly ask you about soft skills in an interview. So it's entirely up to you to showcase them. The secret is to talk about your soft skills as a part of how you answer the question, how you answer the interview questions. It's a matter of explaining your answers with a how statement rather than just talking about the result statement. While it is still important to be well-versed in technical skills that apply to your industry, it's equally important to showcase people skills. The trick is to combine those strengths and abilities on your resume to truly show a potential employer why you would be a valuable asset to the team. We can go to the next slide, which tells us the summary and the definition of how to display the soft skills. Now, you need to highlight your personality. How do you do that? Personality traits I just discussed, there are seven personality traits. They are difficult to demonstrate on a resume. So it's essential to highlight them during the interview. Strategic storytelling can get your personality across to a hiring manager. Sharing stories that demonstrate how you perform during an experience is important to help you get across your personality traits. Discuss how you handled yourself in a crisis or how you showed up as a leader during a positive or negative time. Simply stating you're a team player, for instance, isn't enough for most hiring managers. Instead, provide a concrete instance of when you worked on a team to accomplish a goal. Identify moments of success from your past and think about which soft skill ensured its success. Example, to demonstrate coordination and teamwork, quote that time when you helped resolve a bug across DevOps and run teams by setting up a cross-functional group and iterating till the solution was reached. Put it in the context as to how the above can be used for the current position. These are some of the ways to display your soft skills. A lot of coaching, a lot of students who have done coaching sessions with me, I always tell them, keep your five narrative stories ready with you. And when you go for an interview, and when a question is being asked to you, you pull that out from your data bank and you narrate that incident. And I have also suggested to them to use the STAR model, okay? And those who have done the coaching session with me would know what it means. So when you keep your narratives ready, when you keep your stories ready, your strategic stories ready, it helps you not only to demonstrate your tech skills, but it also helps you to narrate and to display your soft skills, all right? Just be yourself. The most important thing to remember when walking into an interview is that it is completely two-sided. You are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. Have you not found yourself when you enter into an interview room, you also start judging in your mind, oh my God, this person looks very stiff. He looks very tough. He may ask me some tough questions. Or some, somebody who comes across very pleasant, very warm, very easygoing. You know, our mind instantly runs. So you are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. So just be yourself and keep your strategic stories ready. That's the best way to display your soft skills. We move on to the next slides, which are on how to develop soft skills. Yeah, and there you are. So. Just like hard skills, soft skills can also be developed. And since they are related to interpersonal interactions, we can use our three senses to develop our soft skills. What are our three senses? Hearing, seeing, and doing. Yeah? So what do you do by hearing? 
you get feedback from your teachers from your mentors from your counselors from your coaches by seeing what i mean read read and read and read read blogs read articles read the links go go to google find out more knowledge is wisdom wisdom is strength all right so see last doing it after you have read or after you have got the feedback it's not enough you have to action it after every coaching session we give you actions and we give you resources so this is third part is the action after you have received the feedback and after you have read the articles and after you have collated what is it that you need to do you need to set a goal and you need to execute it right and on the next slide we will see every soft skill that you develop will be something you will eventually draw in your career everyone possesses a few soft skills that come naturally to them and they can hone others that may not come as easily the versatility of soft skills and the advantage they can give you in your career are just part of what puts these transferable skills in high demand technical skills usually only apply to a specific industry but soft skills are a benefit across many different types of careers all right our slide last slides actually list some of the ways in which we can develop our soft skills so if you see the slide which is there right now on the presentation there are 11 ways that i have listed that you can develop your soft skills they may come naturally to you or you may have to put an effort to develop them showing empathy today you are searching for a job there are some of the some of the participants may already be in a job so when you are already in a job you need to show empathy for people we feel oh they know it i care there is nothing to show that i care right but that's wrong showing empathy is one of the major areas how you connect with people second we need to listen and respond we think i am listening so what if i'm looking at my phone so what if i'm looking at my presentation no it's important when somebody is talking to you to actually listen to them and respond when you are required to respond these are some of the soft skills which people take for granted especially the millennials because they are always so distracted with technology tools that they think everything is acceptable but trust me in a career in a corporate environment uh, rasha i think your video is on you may want to put it off we can see you walking all right so be patient and display helpfulness how many times it has happened that somebody is trying to talk and we have already understood what the person is trying to say and we become impatient and we just button and we try to complete the statement and we try to say okay let us do it this way we don't even allow the person to actually express what he or she is trying to say this is a soft skill to be able to be patient to hear out the person completely before trying to give your views or your opinions it's a daily life thing whether at home in your personal life or in a professional life i see it so so often with my teenager daughter she's 19 and you know before even i have completed at times she tends to answer and i tell her you didn't hear me you didn't hear the last part you never know what i'm going to say in the last part and your answer may change so be patient and display helpfulness most important thing lot of people know when to talk but they don't know when to keep quiet and that goes a long way in a career i have experienced it all along throughout my career especially in my meetings and my board rooms know when and how to ask the right question i'm not saying be apprehensive and pull yourself back no 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 question is stupid but the timing can be wrong you need to be right on your timing so know when and how to ask the question be approachable a lot of time what happens you may be excellent worker you may be an excellent human being but your body language the non verbal language which is one of the soft skills under communications may come across as you're not approachable and if you're not approachable people will not connect with you if people will not connect with you you will not be able to network if you're not able to network you will not be able to grow the most important thing when you land a job and you get into a workspace is that you need to come across to people very very approachable because it's a new place it's you who needs to make friends or make colleagues and understand and know them so be approachable keep an open mind 
many times people will behave, people will write emails, people will react in a particular manner. Maybe they have been there for a longer time and they know what next is going to happen. Don't jump to conclusions. Have an open mind. Think about it. Sleep over a night and then react to it. That is a very important soft skill to keep an open mind. It's very easy to react to something. All right. Very, very easy. I don't like something. I will switch it off. I, do, I can't understand this. I will not go through this. He didn't tell me I won't do it. No, because it's not about just performing this task or being successful in this job. It's about honing the skill and taking it forward in your life to next job and to your life and ahead in your career. So have an open mind. Solving problems together. I had one very major problem in one of my career uh, points where I was uh, presented with a situation um, where the CEO of the company had gone and given out, given out his email ID on an uh, interview because one of the participants challenged him that all you big leaders talk big things, but when it comes to actually helping people out, if I ask you for your personal email ID, you will not give it to me. So our CEO gave out his email ID and he immediately came out of the interview and he called me. I was heading the uh, escalations team then. It was long back about 18 years ago. And he said, Neera, I have given out my email ID. You can expect whole flood of complaints, customer complaints coming in. And I want all of these to be resolved in 24 hours. I was like, I have a team of only eight people and we are a 25,000 footprint organization and we have millions of customers all over the globe. And you're trying to tell me that no matter how many complaints come in, you want them resolved in 24 hours. But you don't say that to the CEO. The CEO is one way communication. He just made that statement and he put the phone down. And I sat there for five minutes at my desk. And 18 years ago, I was not so senior. I had not seen so much of life. I, I had not developed myself so much. I did get nervous. I was lost and I didn't know what to do. So at that time, I came up with the solution. I went ahead and called for um, emergency meeting with all the executive directors of the company. And they all came and I had given the title of the meeting, what it is. They understood the gravity. They all came and I very clearly shared with them the problem statement. This is what the CEO has said and already 300 complaints have poured in by the time we are meeting. This will go on for probably a week and after this, this will die down but we have to manage the show for one week. So what did we do? I told them, look, a customer complaint is an outcome of operationally some process having broken down. And it is one of your shops. It could be sales, it could be marketing, it could be compliance, it could be risk, it could be operations, it could be anything. But the fact that there is some process which has broken down, that is why a customer complaint has come. It is not a creation of my team. So it will be in your interest if my team sends that complaint to you. Your team can immediately resolve it. We are not going to do the root cause right now. We are just going to give the solution to, this, to, the, to the complaint person, the person who's complaining. This will help two ways. One, we will be able to keep up the brand name. And two, you will not get the flack for your shop not being in order. And three, after this all has subsided, we will have enough data to do root cause analysis and to fix our processes so that these problems don't reoccur. So when you solve problems together, when you bring people together, you tell them your intent, you show your passion, you show your intent, and you show that you're contributing and you roll up your sleeves and you work with them. That is a great soft skill. People will always respect it. People will always be helpful and people will be willing to go that extra mile for you. It worked for me. And I'm talking about 18 years ago when I wasn't so senior, but I did have the courage and the clarity in my mind of going ahead and making sure that we solve this problem. So solving problems together is a great soft skill to have. Be creative, not repetitive. Have a strategy for everything. Be accountable and own your role. How many of us actually in our jobs, in our personal life, own the complete piece? We all think, okay, my, my role is only this much. I will do this. Rest of the things some other coder has to do some other analyst has to do. You know what, at an early age, if you start looking at the whole piece together, 
maybe in the early years you may be putting extra effort but you know what you will gain you will get gain a lot of knowledge and expertise which you can start displaying in your future jobs and in your future interviews which opportunity you won't get it's only at the entry level usually that people try to put more work on you don't deflect it try to take as much as you can because this is going to hone your skills if you have that extra time if you can go that extra mile pick up the extra skills that are being thrown at you and this will make you develop your soft skill of being accountable okay and eventually you will start owning your role when you become a team leader or when you become a leader okay last manage tasks and resources obviously when you reach a very senior position you have to manage your tasks and most important your resources if you don't manage your resources when i say resources you have a budget if you go outside your budget nobody is going to come and give you the budget whether you are at an entry level or you are at the senior most level you all have a budget for everything so you have to manage and you have to plan in advance how do i reach from position a to position z within this year with these resources for example you all are students you all are trying to search for a job what are your resources you have udacity as a resource you may be having your uh, your student councils you may be having your peers you may be having your network these are your resources now with these resources within 6 months time what is it that you want to achieve so manage your tasks and your resources within the timeline and you will be able to uh, get the most out of it so these are some of the soft skills that can be developed and this brings us to the end of our session and i would like to complete my presentation and webinar with the same statement ceiling versus floor hard skills set the floor for a position but soft skills often set the ceiling for how far you can advance that's where that's where we are and that brings us to the question and answer session now it would be very very unfair if i don't let my students bring up their questions and here are 15 20 minutes for you all to put up your questions and summer and jackie are going to help us moderate the chat all yours the show is all yours now please go ahead okay i can see lame how to show our soft skills in our resume soft skills cannot be shown on a resume but it can be displayed when you go for an interview and you have to answer the questions by giving your narrative by giving a story which brings out so if you look at a couple of slides that i have presented now that will help you so on the resume it may not be possible yes you can say i have managed a team so the moment you write the word manage the team they know that you have the skill of managing people yeah so that's one way of showing the other way of showing is if you have uh, completed a large scale project where you have dealt with cross functional stakeholders you can you can narrate it or you can write it in your uh, resume by saying delivered a large scale cross functional program with multiple stakeholders requiring high communication skills so that brings out that you have great communication skills that's why you were able to deliver a very large scale cross functional program the moment you use the word cross functional it means that you have great communication skills so you have to look out for key words resume key words for soft skills if you google it you will be able to find a lot of key words which you can display on your resume okay what if you have two senior managers asking you to do something at work but you have priority work to do with your current team okay so are we saying here that i'm i'm reading andrew's question here now what if you have two senior managers asking you to do something at work but you have priority work to do with your current team that's where you have to manage your task and your resources you cannot say no to your two seniors because i don't know if you have gone through the time management uh, model in that something is called me and something it's i and you so whenever your senior tells you to do something important it is for your development and whenever you have to do something for the for the team it's for them and both are very important for your career 
you will have to go you'll have to burn the candle at times at both the ends you have to sit and have a conversation with all the three your team and the two senior stakeholders you'll have to prove an evidence that how you will prioritize the first and the second and the third and you will still deliver on all the three roles it's not that you're saying no you're just saying i will first do one and then i'll do the second and then i'll do the third and you will give a justification that this can wait while this cannot wait because it has a share shareholder value impact or it has some delivery impact so you have to first show the intent yes i will do it i have two more burning issues if you allow me can i do them and come back to you i will finish it in today's time by so and so time so this is how i have handled but if i know more about the question in detail i'll be able to answer better so maybe you can put this question on student hub or maybe you can put it come over for a coaching session and we can discuss that situation um mira we've got a question from rasha and she says she finds it difficult or hard to ask other people for advice so do you have any special tips that we can share with her here okay she says she finds it difficult to ask people for advice okay yeah so that is rasha one of your soft skills issue you are not having so one of the soft skills that i have written on my last slide is having an open mind let me tell you one thing rasha no question is stupid never ever underestimate yourself it will take only once or twice for your inhibition to go and don't think in your mind that if i go to ask advice i may be little myself or the other person may think i don't understand anything in fact it takes a lot more courage to go out and ask for help and if the other person is matured enough he or she will welcome it and will go the extra mile to not only advise you on what you are asking he or she may guide you on a different perspective and different dimension as well altogether try it and let me know i'll be keen to wait to hear just make that first move and i am very sure you'll be able to break that inhibition in you Mira, a question in from Anis, I believe. Um, and Anis is asking, what are the soft skills needed in IT jobs or IT roles? I, I guess, Mira, that's a combination really, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, Jackie. So Jackie is also one of the career coaches. You may be seeing her on hotline chat. She comes and check her out on the events calendar. I think she comes same as uh, my day or maybe the next day. Um, soft skills as i mentioned during the webinar are transferable skills any soft skill that you have developed can be used in all your jobs whether it's a tech job or it's a non tech job how can you not use communication skills in a tech job how can you not use a team player in a tech job how can you not use problem solving soft skill in a tech job how can you not use empathy in a in a tech job so there is no specific soft skills for tech industry soft skills encompass our personality it encompasses our personal interaction levels it 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 displays our personality traits so there are no specific soft skills for any industry they are applicable across the board any other question jackie and summer so yes. there is a question from is it lamy how to manage stress before the interview that's an excellent question so it's the same before coming for this webinar all right we all experience it's it's a lovely question and you may be seeing me smiling already on the screen okay it's good to have the right level of stress within you because that keeps you on your toes it keeps you alert it keeps you you know agile before coming on this webinar i had that butterflies in my stomach although i have given so many presentations to, throughout my tenure the reason i am not able to see you guys i have never given a presentation where i can't see my audience so i was like how how, how do i know that i'm landing well with my people how do i know that they are listening to me how do i know somebody is not sleeping how do i know somebody is not listening to something else so it's good to have the right amount of stress level but not you know it's like the blood pressure if it goes above high blood pressure is not good and low blood pressure is not good we need to have the right momentum coming back to your question how do you handle stress obviously you have to tell yourself 
what you know nobody else knows because the question which they are going to ask you only you have the right answer for it because you have done it so go with that winner attitude i know what i have done better than anybody else and the fact that they have invited me for the interview it means i have some skills and some experience which they want to explore for hiring so i am good and i will be good when i am there to answer any of their questions and if at all any question comes up which you think you are not comfortable with there is nothing wrong in saying let me take a moment to think about it nobody is going to crucify you for it nobody is going to think oh he is not agile oh he couldn't answer immediately you can always frame your statements by saying well this is a great question but let me just think about it and by that time an answer deep breath tell yourself you're good look into the mirror and say i'm the best that's the best way to do it and by the way these days there are coaches now available which is called coach in your pocket so i have a lot of students um, who call me and they say i have an interview in half an hour so that's another story but there are many tools available if you can't um, manage yourself then you need you can take help from external tools and external coaches on it any other question um, summer or Yes. Um, so, uh, Mila, there is one question that says, um, "How?" So, this this question is from Nikhil. It says, "If we don't know an answer to a question during an interview, how can we express it?" Ah, I answered it without seeing your question, sweetheart. So, if you don't know honestly, if you don't know the answer at all, if it is a domain that you have don't have an experience at all, don't fake it. Just don't fake it. because you the person who's interviewing you has much more experience than you he'll be able to see you through it be honest about it and you can't not have eight on 10 answers if you have been asked 10 questions you can't not have eight answers right you may not have one or two questions for which you don't have answer and if it's genuinely a tech question or something that you don't have hands on experience you should not fake it you should be honest and you should say i don't have an experience on this but from what i have read and what i have heard in my networking activities i think probably this should be the answer correct me if i'm wrong this way you are inviting the other person to help you understand and gather information on the question on which you don't have knowledge so even if you don't clear that round you would have come out a little more knowledgeable and you can use that answer in your next interview with somebody else sounds good nikhil great i hope you'll we'll agree to that uh, also there is one question uh, posted by anis he is uh, he is asking uh, you know whether he could uh, how the, you know what's the best way to put soft skills certificates on the resume is it really helpful and enough to show that uh, you know that the candidate or you know they are really master in some soft skills is it really helpful in a way so is he trying to say that he has soft skill certificates and he yes. wants is asking whether he can put it up on his resume right i think it may be an example wherein someone had participated in a leadership program or or absolutely program can absolutely we... absolutely you need to call it out under your skills or under your education under your certifications absolutely these days employers are looking for people with specialized soft skills especially students or participants or or candidates who have undergone a formal um training so i myself went to singapore for a training on leadership and i put it up on my resume up front because it takes a lot to be there first of all to be selected and to undergo and you come out as a changed person so if you have certifications and you have undergone trainings please put it up under your certifications great uh, thanks a lot for addressing that also so um, naman has a question he says he he you know he he faces problem when there is actually uh, he you know whenever he needs to respond to um, into a larger audience or when there is a lot of people in front of him uh, so he feel that kind of people pressure or that kind of uh, you know like you mentioned butterflies uh, you know before the webinar so that's uh, that's the challenge that he faces what can he do to overcome this fear of uh, you know people um, speaking in a public forum or when there is a larger audience yeah 
so this is kind of called uh, nick what's the name naman um, naman so this is kind of called a stage fright okay you may not be standing on a stage but you are this whole world is a stage okay and we are performers at any point of time whether you're going to watch a movie the people who are waiting for someone they are looking at you whether you go for a dinner people are watching you whether you go for a meeting people are watching you whether you go for a seminar people are watching you so we are always being observed okay so first of all we have to get used to getting comfortable in our skin we have to get comfortable in in understanding and telling ourselves i am unique this is who i am and people will surely accept me if i start accepting myself see this is a very deep question this definitely requires a lot of discussion uh, but if i have to just give you one tip you have to start standing in front of the mirror and start talking and talking and looking at yourself because it's only 20% of what we talk okay listen to me carefully it's only 20% of the content that we talk the 80% is the magic of our body language okay if you get your body language right the confidence will come in people will get attracted people will listen to you people will understand people will automatically want to be there and hear you so 80% is soft skills when you are out there in middle of the people and the only way to hone that skill is to practice and probably even to go for one training one or two trainings so there are online free trainings available there is peer to peer help available you can google and find out those links and you must take one short training there are a lot of trainings which are available where they teach you how to come out of that public speaking fear so go ahead and just explore some of the public speaking courses they are just one day seminars and i'm sure that will help you uh so i think that's it uh, we have answered uh, all the questions uh, uh guys if you have any questions uh, we still have time left i would really encourage everyone if you have any questions uh, that is related uh, to this webinar please do so even if it's not related to the webinar we still have time so i hope we can accommodate uh, something I here i see i see one question from jean mark and um, the question is like rasha i feel difficult to reach out to people and ask for help i have over 20 years of work experience and returning to it after a break several years i fear that people will judge me as weak if i ask for help so um jean you are only weak till the time you think you are weak you know how many people out there in the job actually don't don't know their job but they fake it how they fake it by having a personality by having the soft skills which shows they know it all and you know how they learn they learn by networking they learn by coming and talking to people they get their work done and they show and they take the credit which is not the right way to do it but i have seen tons of people even at the level of vice president and i had to literally get three or four vice presidents chucked out of the organization because i kept observing them they knew nothing and i am talking of technology company i was the chief operating officer in my last role last year when one of the leading european banks uh, and i was heading the technology center there and trust me today the trend has changed in my times going and asking people for help people would show you down but today if you notice even on your career section when any student is asking a question i am so pleased to see so many students jumping in and answering that question they don't even wait for the coaches to come because coaches come at their scheduled time so the trend has changed the millennials do not judge if you tell them hey hey bro i don't understand this can you please help me and they will not only tell you the answer to that they'll give you two or three more things which will help you explore and increase your horizon just do it once and see just do it twice and see and trust me write an email to me how it went and if you still didn't get through let me see what i can do for you okay jean i hope that helps mary you got a question from lamay again so you're being asked can you advise how to set goals to improve our soft skills and then and which soft skills exactly would you encourage us to have and how thank you great uh, summer can you put up just that slide where i had i'll tell you the slide number probably uh, the five the five skills the five summarized top skills go back go back yes 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 that's it so uh, that yeah uh what was the name jackie sorry i didn't get the name naman is it it's lame 
lame lame these are the five top skills that you need to develop because this is an outcome of lot of statistics and lot of research that seven top career related organizations have done with hundreds and thousands of employers and these are the common ones all right if you can develop these five top skills soft skills you have arrived now your question was how to set a goal right it's like this if i want to lose weight only i can decide what i'm going to eat how much i'm going to work out how much i'm going to run correct nobody else can come and help me on this right i'll go i'll go and sneak and eat something it will not help me so if you you are the only person who knows how much time do you have in a day that you can genuinely put aside for developing a soft skill we all think we will cross the bridge when it comes my dear the bridge will come and it will go under you and you will not come to know always be prepared in all my coaching sessions i say pre preparatory steps are very crucial if you don't do the pre preparatory steps you will not be able to get the right result for your action so you set a goal by when do you want to be excellent in communication so if you set a date then you go backwards and then you will start exploring what does communication mean it has verbal it, it has five senses that's a large topic i will be covering that in my next workshop so you set a goal and you you don't have to be um, very aggressive if you think you don't have the time it's okay take four weeks give yourself four weeks i think that's more than enough to to hone it at 50% we are not talking about being 100% i cannot say that i'm 100% good at all the soft skills the human tendencies come up i may become impatient at time depending on the situation you never know it doesn't mean i don't have the soft skills it only means that i'm not able to control myself at that particular moment so set a goal based on your comfort of course push yourself don't be so comfortable i will complete it in 6 months by that time you may land a job and you may not be successful at it because you lack communication skills so two things these are the five top skills you set a goal you set the time aside and then if you need help you either set up a coaching session with any one of the coaches or you go for one of the training seminars which is available in your location Mira, a really good question has come in from Gurab. Um, it's about telephone interviews. So, how do I present myself um, for an interview, communication-wise? So, I think Gurab, where you're coming from probably is how can you come across communication-wise when you're having a telephone interview? Very good question. Why don't you try one thing? So, there is a link. I don't have it handy right now, but it's peer-to-peer -peer interviewing. All right. So. where you actually dial in to appear and he asks you questions and you answer that you record that for yourself and hear it and you will realize how is your pitch how is your tone how are you landing did you mean to say what you said did you cover everything that you wanted to say or did you miss out it will tell you the speed of your thought and the speed of your speech it will tell you the tone and it will tell you how it landed and also when your peer answers you the questions you will hear him also that will give you an experience of how when you are talking on a telephonic interview how you are landing so there is a two way process one you record yourself and you hear how you have spoken second when your peer is answering the questions you hear him and you try to understand what he could have done right or what you could have done if you were in his place i hope this answers your question Practice. Do we have time for one more? I think, uh, Summer, we have come to an end. We have just one minute left. So I can take one more question. Right. Uh, sorry. Okay. So this is from Kritika. It says, um, she. Okay. So Mila, she is a full-time homemaker, and she is planning to start her career in IT. Uh, she completed her Bachelor of Engineering in two thousand two, and have three years of teaching experience. Uh, so she wants to understand how could she justify the long break that she had, um, you know, while you know being married and then completing and now starting again. I think that's a very common question that we find, uh, especially for women who after the marriage they want to uh, resume their work or after the kids they want to resume their work, but they sometimes lack 
uh, the better explanation of what uh, you know what they wanted to do how they are actually uh, would be more uh, you know helpful in the company okay i have taken a break uh, twice in my life and this is the third time i have taken a break i've taken a break last year from my corporate world and i'm sharpening my saw because i want to study and i want to do something more and who knows probably in a year's time i may be back again with a big bang into the corporate industry uh, when my child was born um, what's the name hala i can see that's the name uh, summer hala is the name i don't know what's it's kritika it's kritika okay so kritika um, uh, when my daughter was born incidentally my daughter's name is kritika um, uh, kritika my when my daughter was born i took a break of 5 years and i had this fear in my mind oh my god 5 years is like half a decade and so many more graduates have come in with so many more new technology tools and knowledge i'll be like one old hag over there and how will i sit with them and give an interview that comes in our mind but you know one thing that we have which they don't have they do not have the life experience which we have and the life experience is never taught in any theory in any book in any forum it comes with life experiencing life and that looks and comes out in our persona if you have your qualifications and your experience in the right place and if you are eligible for the eligibility criteria which is laid out in the job description do not underestimate yourself your gravitas your persona your life experience will make you stand apart from the rest of the people then it depends on the organization what they want to put their uh, stakes on whether they want to put stakes on somebody who's just a fresher or has has less experience or somebody who is holistic person who has experienced life and also has the tech skills that they are looking for so don't hesitate just go out and give yourself a try and you will be surprised that these were unfounded um, unfounded fears because i have been there and i have done it so i'm telling you out of experience thank you for asking that question thank you all for coming here it was really interesting and this was very very interactive and that is what makes a speaker or a coach happy it would be it would it would be incomplete if i was the only person talking here um you were a lovely audience thank you for the poll answers thank you for the questions and i hope you all got something out of this webinar um i may be coming up with another webinar next month and i will definitely put it up on the student hub thank you have a good day in whichever location you are summer and jackie you all were awesome summer without you i wouldn't have been able to display my presentation and jackie without you i wouldn't have been able to answer my questions i look forward to supporting you both in your seminars have a good day bye bye and god bless yeah thanks meena thanks a lot uh, for this wonderful session and thanks everyone for participating and also jackie thanks a lot for all the help that you did in answering and picking up the questions thanks again guys bye 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 guys bye